Upper and Noxabee counties until 1030 local time. Philadelphia, Mississippi getting some heavy rainfall and that rain continues to work on off toward the north and northeast. So the rain coming down to beat the band here. Numerous flood warnings in effect and these flood warnings covering heavy rainfall that's fallen over the past uh, three hours. Some of these totals up to four inches here as you can see. So a bunch of rain in a short period of time promise flood warnings and that means flooding eminent or is occurring and around Jackson rain's just about done but look at this as you head off toward the east into central parts of Tennessee Nashville now looks like your bullseye for some of the heaviest rain and some of that heavy rainfall Keith mm. uh, starting push in the music city so if you do have to head out late tonight maybe you're a graveyard shift worker you have to uh Take it easy. All right. Well, when a tornado hits, what you can do can mean the li difference between life and death. Jim Cantori goes through a virtual one to show you what to do. Tornadoes, raging tubes of unstoppable destruction. With winds so powerful, they can turn whole towns into a pile of toothpaste. If you find yourself in the path of a tornado, knowing where to take shelter can save your life. Scenes like this happen all too often when large, destructive tornadoes hit towns across America, leaving them in utter destruction. But what you see here isn't exactly as it seems. As real as this looks, I'm actually at the Guardian Centers here in Perry, Georgia, which is a huge 830-acre facility designed to recreate disasters for preparedness and disaster response training. Scott, as a first responder, what would you recommend when a tornado warnings issue? The most important two things. Number one, heed the warning. Don't ignore it. Number two, seek shelter immediately. In an interior windowless room or down in the basement. If you're underground, we at least have a chance to get you out. I've been in dozens and dozens of aftermath situations, but I've never been through a tornado. So what they did here is set up a situation where I could actually go through a simulated tornado in the bathroom. We had him run and dive in the bathtub, and we shook the walls back and forth to simulate the tornado. I can feel the walls shaking already. I can feel it here in the crashing all around, but I actually kind of felt safe. While I use a mattress in my simulation, a blanket is definitely another option and most likely easier to grab. And remember, if you don't have a basement, go to an interior closet, hallway, or bathroom on the lowest floor in the structure. Being below ground is the best place to ride out a tornado. After the strongest tornadoes, it's not unusual to see entire buildings collapse on top of basements or underground shelters. When this happens, survivors need help to get out from under the debris. One of the things we wanted to demonstrate to Jim was what it's like to rescue a live victim using listening devices to look for victims buried under the rope. Somebody help me! I hear a woman. I hear a girl. Once Jim located the victim with the listening device, he drove a hole through some of the concrete in the rubble. We ran a search camera down in there where we were able to actually get a visual of her. And then the team began to come in with the jack camera. We created a big hole in the concrete, large enough for us to pull her up through and rescue her from the boy's face. My biggest takeaway today is if you can do the right things and you can do them quickly, get in a storm shelter or get in an interior room, you're going to give yourself a chance to survive.